Do you hear that sound, Matt? The sound of silence? Yeah. Do you know what that sound means? It's my old friend. <laughs> it means that we're going to be playing with an Xbox game controller and not oh. a loud, obnoxious mechanical keyboard. Well, yes. Uh... Sorry, I thought you were going on about your obsession from last time about, but there's so much silence on the title card, what does it mean? <laughs> I had already also noticed true. that because it says press A to start and not enter. Press A to start. Still equally epic. Oh man, that's right. 102.7%. We get to do the really exciting thing of starting our second playthrough of Fez today. How the hell is it 102? I don't know. It says I played for 4 minutes and 35 seconds. Th that's uh, hours. Oh. Okay. Well, well, should we dig into it? Hell yeah. So for the second playthrough... Oh, start new game plus. Yep. Fun. For the second playthrough, we will be using an Xbox controller, and we will see if it is better yeah. it's for the not player. A second It'll obviously playthrough. better for the viewer. It, it's not a second right. playthrough. Except that it makes you replay the beginning again. It is exactly the same. And it's just continuing well, where you left off. Can I rotate? Not yet. You don't have your fez yet. I'm wearing my fez. No, you don't have your fez yet. You can't rotate. I'm wearing a fez. Nope. Why are you lying to me? <laughs> I don't know why you can't rotate. Should I talk to them? Do they say other things now? No. Absolutely nothing about the game world has changed. Except that I haven't figured out how to use these uh, controls yet, because I'm playing on an Xbox, so that's fun. Ah. Uh. Alright, I'm not going to bother exploring anything. That's Although, fair, yeah. Uh, I don't have any keys left. That's odd. I thought you actually opened up that room last time you were here. Guess some of the doors may have closed. I don't know, man. I don't know. All right, old man. There are you. All right. What is happening? Oh boy. Now, it's been a while since we played through the original opening. How much has changed at this point? There is only one change, and you will know it when you see it. Speaking in cube hieroglyphics. That's right, I do remember this. How many people do you think stop when they get to a hundred percent? Like, are there large swaths of the population who play through up until this point and then never experience all the rest of it? Hey. <coughs> Pardon me, I have no idea. I imagine that the majority of people don't go rushing to finish right when they get 32. And I expect that most people would... Ah. Oh, damn. My future's so bright. Oh, who's that cool guy? You didn't finish the line? I was letting it hang there so you could... <laughs> ah. It was implied. I didn't want to interrupt your moment. What? What is this? Oh my what? god, you can play Minecraft. What? You can look around? <laughs> the Dude. fuck? 
I can't move though while I'm here. That's the crazy. I fuck you, Phil Fish. What happened? On PC, when you go into first person mode, you don't get to move your view around. Are you serious? You just see this? Absolutely serious. That's it. You get one view, and you have to move yourself or turn the world to see a different view. So then you would, like, go over here and then do that? Yeah. What so the? you can't... So he actually took that functionality out of the PC. Wait, I'm wondering if you used the mouse. How appropriate, then, that I grabbed? I'm wondering if... Because you don't use the mouse for anything else in the game, but it is a thing, and I'm wondering if you move them. What the You hell? know, another thing that I'm realizing is I can actually cause my character to look up, look down, look left, and look right. I don't think I ever was able to do that either. This is going to be quite a different gameplay experience. What I the can fuck? say with some certainty. Well, I, now that we're here, I don't really know what's going to happen, though. Let's see. I guess I could just jump down. You could. Oh, there's another cube down there. Did no, you see it's that? the same cube. It, it's locked in position on the screen. Oh, weird. Invisible wall. Oh, I can rotate now, though, so that's good. Oh, I'm making it spin faster. Slow down. Oh, can't make it slow down. Oh, broke the game. Wait, so I had those really cool sunglasses, and now they, they're they gone? Yep. What? So, you know, I have to say, you get credit for making a Future So Bright reference instead of the far more obvious and less interesting deal with it reference. <laughs> well, cool. I am that unhip. No, no, that's quite the opposite. Oh, the game's glitching out. I remember this. This really is a cool game. It is. I can't... I can't believe that there... That you played the whole game the wrong way? <laughs> that there's a wrong way to play it, and it doesn't tell you. Ooh, check this out. It is kind of annoying that you can't move around, because I guess that makes sense. I would just always move around in first-person mode. Mm -hmm. I want to be a drummer. Got to beat the game again. Really? It's the only way to play the drums? Pretty much, yeah. Is that a QR code? No. <laughs> now I'm looking everywhere for QR codes. No, the only QR codes are giant wall-spanning murals. <laughs> As, as one does with QR. <laughs> Which is actually quite accurate. Um, there's nothing else in the village you can do yet. There is one or two more secrets, but you don't have the knowledge you need to activate them. Oh, you know what you should do is go back to the purple room and explore all those other doors that I told you not to explore earlier. Oh yeah, I would like to do that. I'm just trying to remind myself what was in here because I haven't been back here in a long time. That's right, I remember that. The owl, the Twin Peaks joke. I started watching Twin Peaks, I'm on episode three. Oh, fantastic, how are you liking it? Uh, the first episode was really, really boring and bad and like I almost put the show down, but I decided to watch the second one and it really picked up. Yeah. Is that a common complaint? I don't or is know. That just me being impatient? Possibly. The, it, it's not the kind of show that you think it's going to be. Yeah, it definitely got a lot more lighthearted in episode two. It's, it's, I mean, it's a David Lynch show. There's no other entirely accurate way to describe it. Yeah. It, what did he do outside of that in Mulholland Drive? Blue Velvet. Um, That's right. Did he direct... Dune. The main actor is the guy from the movie Dune. Mm. And also Desperate Housewives, apparently. Yeah, so, um... Yeah, interesting. Yeah. I'm excited to learn what the Owls reference is. <laughs> Twin Peaks is pretty fantastic. Um... 
until David Lynch leaves around the eighth, somewhere between the 16th and 18th episode. I don't know. He leaves and some other people take over and try to continue the show in the way they thought he was doing it, but they don't understand. And it goes really bad really fast. Huh. But the first 16 to 18 episodes or so are just amazing. I just realized what the, the probably the main benefit of being able to go first person is. What's that? You get to see ceilings and floors. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, I wonder if that comes into play. Like, you know, some QR code is written on a floor or a ceiling. I would have never had a chance to explore that mm-hmm. previously. I don't know. Am I onto something or is that just a silly observation? Do you want me to tell you whether you're onto something or not? I've been really trying, know. and people still oh, comment a bit. Oh, there's something. See? Uh-huh. Oh, look at all these stars. All right, don't tell me. Don't tell me. The last thing I would want to do is upset people. Well, I'm trying to only give you hints when it's clear you're stuck. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I'm trying that's not cool. to do the thing like, no, no, you're on the right track for the most part. Or not. Well, there's something here, so I, I'll just file this away. Because that is interesting. All right. I'm going to go down. It's all the way down, right? Yep, all the way at the very bottom. Just jump off. You'll make it. Oh, really? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't jump far enough, Matt. <laughs> Let's try this. Okay. Damn it. That one didn't work either. <laughs> you didn't jump well enough. <laughs> jump right, better. So, speaking of, because they just came in, we got a new dog. Oh, what's this dog's name? So, our first dog is named Frey, because we're Norse mythology geeks, and Frey is an excellent name for a golden retriever for a variety of different reasons. And we were... The rescue that we go through, they tend to give their dogs terrible, stupid names for the most part. Um, like, Frey was originally named Jake, and they've got... You know, lots of buddies and pipers and whatever. Just boring dog names. And so we were trying to think of what we would name a second dog. But then the dog that we found, the name that she came with was Mary Sue. All right. And you don't get why that's funny. I don't. Okay. Are you familiar with the phenomenon of fanfic? Sure. Okay. So way back when, when... all fanfic was Star Trek fanfic because nothing else had been invented yet. Um, there was a particular infamous... One of these days you'll get it. Uh, infamous fanfic starring a character, a woman named Mary Sue. And Mary Sue was beautiful and special and everyone fell in love with her and she was better at everyone's jobs than they were like you know she's better at engineering than Scotty better at medicine than the doctor you know etc and she saved the Enterprise over and over and was perfect and basically just this blatant author self insert character Okay. and so the term Mary Sue has come to mean an obvious author self insert who can do no wrong and is just perfect in every possible way. It's used very derogatorily. Um, but it's a perfect name for a dog. <laughs> okay. I mean, you gotta admit. I'm sure there's a reason. Um, yeah, because you obviously would want a self insert. You actually want the other three doors on the lower level. Those are yep, the. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, just, uh... No, the funny thing is, she's. A golden retriever mix. We're not absolutely sure who, she, what she's mixed with. We think we were told collie, and that's possible. It might also. She looks kind of like a fox, honestly. So that's probably not what happened. <laughs> um, you're not getting a thing because you haven't been through there yet at all. I know. Let's check it out. Well, yeah. that's cool. Um, Welcome to. Uh, was it Mary Sue? Did you say? Yeah, Mary Sue. Welcome to Mary Sue. Thank you. Um, and so she, this thing that I'm experiencing right now, I would have experienced if I'd come back here with four cubes. Correct. It's like the uh, Hopi cliff dwellings. 
Oh, see, there's more of these targets. Yeah, there's something going on there. I'll figure it out. Okay. I wonder if you can actually go through these little windows. No, but you can go through the doors. Doors? Doors are for suckers. True. That's what I always say. So, Frey, our, our primary dog, is a giant goofball, basically. Oh, congratulations, you got a key. Thank you. Um, he is pure golden all the way. Mary Sue is a little... She has a lot of kind of cat-like behaviors. Like, she's a... She stalks prey in the backyard. She actually killed a shrew the other day. So that was entertaining. That's pretty um, cool. And she'll, like... She doesn't come up and demand endless pets, pettings. Um, but she will, like, rub by your shins on her way past, or like a cat or something. So my theory is, since she was picked up as a stray, and we don't really know anything about the first year of her life or whatever before she was rescued. Oh, well this done. Whole thing is a black hole. Yeah. You can try and rotating I can't the rotate. room. Oh, you can't rotate? Can you I first can. person? No. Huh. Interesting. Well, that's pretty cool. What if I try jumping from over here? If I jump really fast? No. Oh, well, that room sucks. Anyway, so I've developed the theory that she was actually raised by cats. And <laughs> eventually she grew old enough to realize that she was a dog and they cast her out and she ran away in shame or whatever. And it's at this point that Alexa explained to me that I needed to stop writing fanfics about Mary Sue. <laughs> I like it. That's yeah. good. So Mary Sue is uh, sticking. Yeah. She and Frey get along All the other really dogs. Well. All the other dogs are going to make fun of her, though. Why? Because her name is Mary Sue. <laughs> no, all the other dogs will love her because she's amazing and perfect. Don't you know how this That's works? True. That's fair. You, yeah, you can't go first person or rotate. This is like the most boring room ever. This must be from a civilization before they discovered three dimensions. Look how tall their heads are. Oh, check this out. Cave paintings. There's not actually enough detail on the stream, but I trust that they're really cool. Oh, they're all right. All yeah, right. So this well, is like uh... this is like super ancient, prehistoric civilization that we found here. So this you is are uh, dimension. able to get you're able to get swept up in the uh, backstory of this a bit, quite a bit more than I was. You know, like unraveling the history of. Well, of I didn't pre-fez. I didn't get it all initially. Oh, see, now they're bowing down or worshiping someone with a shorter head than they have. Or, or an owl. Oh, was that an owl? See, I actually couldn't tell. Oh, yeah, because owls introduce three dimensionality to them. Oh, right. When the with the heads that yeah. spin. Yeah. Well, that was interesting. So this, these are little like things where like, congrats, you get four little cute bits, so that's good, yep. and also a little bit of backstory. Yep, and you see why I told you not to rush back and open the door right when it told you to? Yeah. It's not worth making a whole special trip, but. Well, this looks interesting. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be honest, I like I said, I didn't figure all this stuff out on my first time playing through, but reading stuff afterwards, I'm like, oh, that's really cool. So I'm trying to kind of point it out to you as you play. This is really neat. I like this a lot. Yeah. This is like the Blade Runner level. Yes. Finally, you are correct. You compare fucking everything to Blade <laughs> Runner, but eventually <laughs> you find something that's actually like Blade Runner. So good work. It's, uh, it's really a numbers game with me. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew what these uh, things translated to. Actually, oh wow, they even have the little restaurant on the side and it's raining and dark and all the neon lights. Yeah. Interesting. Like I said, this is clearly... This is Blade Runner. Or in, inspired by it. Showers. Nothing interesting. Okay. Oh, you can't actually walk out the door even though you can see it. Funny. Well, 
what, did you actually, I, I'm trying to remember, did you compare Cube to Blade Runner at some point? I think you did. I doubt that very much. Maybe. You made a pair of bizarre comparisons at one point. <laughs> Find the proof. Oh, I should have actually Video spun three. through that room. Uh, let's see. Okay, well, now that I've spun around that and can verify that it is, in fact, not interesting, let's go forward. Well, I have to say, I did lose quite a bit of my aspiration in the game, having opened that big door. And I'm left here just wandering, you know? That's fine. That's sort of the point of the whole just, game, is just to wander and explore. Fair, fair enough, but uh, you did have a particular goal for most of that wandering and exploring. Oh, that's interesting. Now, this Tetromino's. is explicitly teaching you how to rotate the tetromino code if you hadn't figured it out yourself, somehow. What do you mean to rotate it? Well, see, it's the same code written three times. First, it's written out normally with the shapes in their, quote, correct orientation, and then they turn it on its head the way it's actually written, and then they squish it together. So it's showing right. you exactly how to break down the unbroken strings into their components if somehow you hadn't been able to get that step of the code. And this is kind of interesting. I wonder if that's going to be relevant or just nice little flavor. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this. Should I decode? bother decoding that? I believe it's the same one as the did. slightly larger one on the other wall. No, you actually do want to decode that, I'm pretty sure. Oh, right here? Yeah. Oh, so I... Oh, interesting. I didn't even realize that. I should actually decode it right here and then do what it says. Huh? Yeah. But I believe that it, the one in the small picture is the same as this one right here, so... Let me quickly check. No, they're not. Oh, interesting. Well, uh, try them both, I guess. I tried the bigger one first, because that's a lot easier to read. Okay. So, what do we got here? Tell a story. Um, guess what I'm drinking right now? Uh, Motherfucking what? icy. Because I'm an adult. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get a bellyache. I hope you get a bellyache. What? Why would I get a bellyache? Because you're drinking I an got, icy. I got brain freeze at first. Man, I wrote my glip, my like uh, decipher key that I've been using based on the keyboard controls. Ha 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 ha! So now I have to remember. So what does up arrow, down arrow, left arrow on the keyboard do? That um, that has me move. Okay. Yeah, it, those are the movement controls. And then what is D and A? Those are left trigger and D right and trigger. D and A is rotate. Except the other way around. A is left trigger. And uh, space is jump. Space? space is jump, which is A. Okay, let's see if I got this figured out. Huh? That's so funny. I would have totally walked right out of this room and been like, "Oh, that's a useful little decipher," but I already figured it out. <laughs> Classrooms are generally important. I there's a couple of classrooms in the game, and I think they all have interesting, if not actually significant, stuff written on their walls. All right, well, let's solve this one real fast. Oh, whoops. almost forgot. It gets twisted on its side. Yeah. So, I have been pouring hours and hours recently, again, in my theme of playing games several years after they come out, uh, into New Vegas. Hmm. Have you played that one? I did, but not for very long. Oh, man. I made it to the, I made it to the strip and a little past the strip. I didn't, I never really got into Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. I know that's a total travesty well, to say. Well, I, I, what I've heard is that Fallout 3 is not particularly good, but that New Vegas is superb. 
and I mm. I'm absolutely loving it. Just the between the atmosphere and writing, it's incredibly cool. I'm having a lot of trouble figuring out what this is. What? I can't see to I'm help t- you. Um. Okay. So it it starts with uh, what can only be. Hang on, be, Matt. Um, Matt, do me a favor. Uh, go out to the map. I don't know what the button for that is, and see whether there's still a secret in this room because there may not be. Yeah, I don't actually know what that is about. Oh, it's the room is gold. Oh, then whatever that is is not a separate thing you have to decode. Okay, but I'll just call your attention to it because it's interesting. If you try and break this down into its shapes, the first one is, uh, you know, it's a flat line with a bump in the top middle of it. But then the second one is like a, a giant plus sign, which isn't a shape that I can form. I huh. can form it with a, a vertical line with a nub sticking out to the left, for example, but then that would leave just a single cube, almost like a spacer, which I'm not sure how to how to decode, and then it goes into the two large cubes. But unless I'm missing something, I don't think that this is something that can be easily decoded. I well, clearly you're right because it can't be. Maybe he did, the, did that deliberately so that people wouldn't be confused about why they couldn't get a cube out of it. Oh, also, some of these symbols, uh, the neon ones, are the Polytron logo, like the top right one near the owl. That's true. I wonder if that's relevant to it's breaking not. the code. It's not. That is a coincidence. Cool, though. Yeah. Bunk beds. Basically, this appears to be some sort of industrial city, and you found, like, the workers' barracks or something is my best read. Yeah, it's cool. I like trying to... Hang on, I think... I don't know. Are there doors you've missed here, or have you got everything? Oh, yeah, you're right. There's that one. Aha! Ah! Ah. It's Mjolnir. Oh, wait, no, it wasn't. Wait, maybe it what are is. those little pluggers? Wait, is that a hammer in the corner there? Might be. That's totally Mjolnir. What does that mean? Thor's hammer. Mm. Look, I told you we were Norse mythology geeks. I suppose it could be. I don't think it's, like, actually... Maybe it's a dynamite plunger. I don't know. It sort of looked like a dynamite plunger to me, but... Let's yeah. go with Thor's hammer. That's way more awesome. Yeah, it Thor's hammer is notable for having an extremely short handle. Ah. This is an original Norse mythology dick joke that they actually do make in the in the original myths. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I feel like there's uh, something to do with this Polytron logo. There is not. It's, it, not. it is coincidental that it looks like the Polytron logo. It's part of the writing code that you haven't deciphered yet. Alright. Well, let's blow this town. Alright. And now you should go back to that other city through the... that we kind of rushed through. Yeah, I'd like to. Yeah. Because there's some cool... This one? Yep. There's some cool stuff in there. So, it's funny. We don't have a ton of original material for Norse mythology. We've got one book of sort of... It, we've, we've got the two Eddas, one of which is called the Poetic, because everything in it is basically in a form of verse or another. Um, and then the Prose Edda, which is a collection made in the I want to say 11th or maybe 12th century. Like, we know it was who it was. There was an, a guy who set out to collect and write down all of the myths because he knew they were dying out. Um, but by that point, the myths had already become, you know, quote, contaminated by Christianity, and we don't know exactly how much is original. Interesting. And it's also a problem because even from the original stuff, the poetic Edda, um, one of our best sources for just little tidbits about the different gods and who they were and things they did come from this particular 
poem called The Locusena. You know, so you know who Loki is, right? Sure, yeah. yeah the, uh, the that's actually my parents' trickster. dog's name. Oh, fascinating. <laughs> yeah, so bad guy, trickster. Anyway, the Locusena is Loki getting drunk and insulting all the other gods. Like, and I slept with your wife, and you're an idiot bastard sort of thing. And okay. the problem is, we don't actually know how much of this to take as literal. I just saw something. Yes, he did. I was wondering if you would notice that. Oh. Is that a code that I should just break and... No, no. This is complicated and stupid, and I don't understand exactly how it's supposed to work. But I know... Remember you saw this, something like this, in the other throne room, too? Yeah. This is the alternate solution to the QR code. What? If you don't have a QR code reader, you can get this line of code and the other line of code from the other throne room and, like, put them side by side and read across the lines, and that will make the cube appear instead. Well, that's pretty lame. Yeah, yeah. Do you think I should go into that throne room and do the QR code just to no, get a cube? No, no. no. Um, so yeah, one of the sources of North mythology, we don't really know how much we can take as original as opposed to heavily Christianized. Oh, this is fun. I remember these illustrations. All right, well, we got some uh, guys looking up and some other guys. Uh, one's a king, maybe he's got a beard, or maybe that's a rocket ship plume coming down. Really? Do you not recognize the things up top? Oh yeah, that's right. From the from the ending. Uh huh. The little sp space spaghetti monster guys. Yep. And in fact, you saw a statue that had been built of one of them at some point earlier. A All right. So we got statue. three guys. It looks like one of them might be wearing a fez. Okay. And then uh, two guys, and one becomes a king, and he's got some big cube above his head. The cube above his head is being... And, oh, so the crown is transferred to these uh, flying guys, and they're sort of picking up the cube, and then it's the fly guys with the crown and the cube. It's like passing off the baton. Uh, there is deeper meaning that you do not have the knowledge to interpret yet. Hmm. But that's actually a fascin... That room is a fascinating bit of backstory once you do have the other knowledge you need to interpret what that cube you were describing that they were holding up is. How interesting. It really does feel like the game has changed pretty significantly. Now it's uh, it's really just a game about, you know, solving this mysterious backstory, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I don't really know what my objective is anymore. Oh, that's interesting. It's not about solving the backstory. Think of that as my running commentary. It continues to be about exploring and collecting things. All right, so this obviously can be folded up into a cube. Yep. And there's, I'm still, like, I, I don't know if I will spot the decipher, the cipher rather, when I see it, but just file all this stuff away. There we go. All right. So... All right, what are the things we got here? That wall is critical. All right. So do you think uh, we should just spend some time here and try and figure this out? Yeah, tell me what you're looking at. Okay, I'm going to write it down. No, 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 no. Uh, we've got... You don't need to write anything down. This is a purely visual cerebral puzzle. Alright, well we've got a square with a dot. Alright, so uh, Alright, so, oh, I see what's happening in the bottom. What's happening on we've the bottom? We've got a, uh, a dot is, is you know, one point. A line is made with two points. Or maybe, I guess, I don't know. Something about one dimension. And then you go to a cube, a uh, square rather, which would be like three dimensions and then a check cube. Your, check yourself. You're you're very close, but you're making a stupid error. One. What uh, is a point? Uh, How many dimensions is a point? Is it zero? I don't know. Correct. 
Okay, so then line is 1, square is 2, cube is 3. Oh, so then that's the numbers 0, 1, 2, and 3. Yes. Okay. Now, hang on, there's something else. Explain to me what the why there is an irregularity in the numbering system there. Um, hang on just a second. I'm writing it down just in case it becomes relevant. Okay. Why is there an irregularity in the numbering system? Because when we start counting as English-speaking humans, we start with one, and then we would look at this as one, two, three, four. Matt, why they is... They are starting with zero. Explain to me why number th why the number three isn't a line coming up from the bottom. Uh, why the number three isn't a line coming up from the bottom? Well, because look at one and two. They're establishing a pattern, and then number three breaks that pattern. The numerals here. I'm talking about their figures for the numerals. Well, uh, mm. one has nothing inside the square. That's zero. Two has something. That's zero. Sorry, zero. One has something. Uh, two is that same thing rotated, and three is something added. What do you mean? But uh, zero has no lines on it. Okay. One, they they've drawn a line down vertically in the center. Mm-hmm. Then from one to two, they rotate it. Mm-hmm. Uh. But again, in the, in just two dimensions, not three dimensions. And then from two to three, they add another line again. Why do they do that instead of rotating it again? Um, I think at this point, any answer would be speculation. I'm not well, sure. Well, okay. That now, now take a look here. at some of the other walls of the classroom and see if you can figure something out. You're not leaving this room until you've decoded the numbers. Okay. Let's see. So that top number there is uh, three, and then there's two bars, and then oh, so you're telling me that I should be able to figure out all numerals uh, exactly. One through ten. You should now have enough information to figure out the numbers system. Okay, I'm presuming it doesn't matter that here they use black lines, but here Correct. they use white lines. That's actually an important visual distinction. It's hard to get. It, it can be hard to wrap your head around that. It's an important visual distinction, but it's actually not relevant to the code. Correct. All right. Well, let's see here. So that's three something something. And then we don't know that lower one. Oh, that lower one appears in its... Uh, what should three that... three symbols that don't... Yeah, what should that lower one be? Well, it's the same as everything else. There's three symbols that I don't know and the yeah. number three. Okay, those symbols, that symbol that you don't know, what should that be? Well, I guess, you know, if it could potentially be three. Okay. Because it goes one, two, and then it would be rotated again, and it would be three. What does the thing in the middle look like? Middle vertically. Oh, it's an equal sign. Or the number 11. Or an equal sign. Huh. So... So it's the same. It, it, are you suggesting that those are both the number three? Yes. On the right, oh. it's showing you a unity. It's telling you, yup, you are correct to read that as an equal sign because, look, here are two things that are clearly the same with an equal sign in between them. Right. Okay. So... Why is that other symbol that doesn't make sense within that system to be three stand for three? What's the reasoning behind that? Uh, well, it it went to, it made the jump to three dimensions. D just look at the top. Oh, is it because it's it's uh, one plus two? Exactly. So when you layer these things on top of each other. Exactly. Oh, and look at the bottom. It's sort of hinting at that. Yes. Interesting. <laughs> All right. Okay. You've zero. now decoded the back the number system for the most part. Well, I wonder if I have enough to know all the numbers. Well, really? Can you make every number with zero, one, two, and three? And four, I guess. I can assume four is... You can make every number from one through ten. 
because 5 is 4 plus 1. Uh, 6 would be 4 plus 2, 4 plus 3. How would you do? And then 8 would be. How would you get 8? Can you layer them again and again and again? Like 4 plus 3 plus 2? Or 4 plus 3 plus 1, I guess? Why yeah, not? presumably you could. Yeah. Okay, so that would be 8. And then 9 would be 1 plus 2 is 3. That's 3. 1, 2. How do you get 9? 4 and 3 and 2? Yeah, okay. All right, so that's enough to get all the numbers. Yeah, take a look around real fast, though. There's one other wall we have in that one there. All right, well, that's uh, that would be one. All right, let me just cross out something I did that was wrong there. Zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's saying one plus two plus seven. Seven eight, uh, is nine. Yep, that's correct. Uh, the uh, right one. Uh, except for the, the last answer is ten and oh, not is nine. Ten. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> right. Right, right, right. <laughs> I was so caught up on what I thought not, that I thought that was nine. Uh, okay, so then we got uh, one. Sorry, that's two plus three is five plus five is 10. Yep. Okay. Got it. Yep. So there's now that you've thoroughly decoded the number system, there's one fun bit of backstory I want to point your attention to. Uh, rotate again there. Nope. Go back one. Notice anything interesting on this wall? Oh, well, the monster is holding up some sort of number. Yeah. The number three. So what do we always see those monsters doing when we see them in the sequential wall paintings? Holding uh, a crown or a cube or Not something? Not just holding. Stealing, taking? Stealing, yeah. Basically, the stealing. backstory it's giving you here is that the aliens came and stole the number three. Oh, weird. But not so they just stole the, the third dimension. Exactly. That's so there. That's the backstory of Fez, such as it were. There is a development of civilizations, as you know, head sizes got flatter and flatter, and eventually they, you know, at some point they discovered owls taught them of the third dimension, and then the aliens came and stole it, which is why your village doesn't believe in the third dimension anymore. Interesting. Well, I'm going to take a look at this real fast. We've got 10, 1, 4, uh, 1, this is 4, this is 6. I don't know if this is relevant to anything. I'm not sure that it is, to be honest. I don't know. It might mean Zero. something if you could translate the language to the left, but I don't know otherwise. Well, those are all just... Oh, they're not all just numbers. No, they are all just oh, numbers. Oh, no, Matt, I know. Look in your artifacts. Oops. Yeah, we have no idea what the key for this is, do we? <laughs> not is that, that one. Not... Damn it. Not any of these. Why? There! That's why. Okay. Artifacts. Oh. Spin this around a bit. Oh, you can rotate it fully. Well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. This is So those are the plans for this cube, and because of the way it works, this cube lets you write any numeral, depending on the way you orient it. Hmm, like I if you... I'm not sure I follow that. Let's see. Okay, so pull it back up. Basically, this if you dip this cube in ink and use it as like a type plate or whatever it is, oh. you can use it to write any numeral. I just stamp it. But again, yeah. if, if it was just this, you could use it to write any numeral. It'd just be annoying. True. They, so they made it uh, so that it's more convenient for you. So those are all the different shapes that a number can be. Alright. Alright. Woo! 
So, just backstory. Though. Yep, but pretty cool. I wonder what that string of numbers on the left is. That's worth decoding. Is that a string of numbers, not letters? It does oh, it be numbers. Huh. I... Wow, just came into sharp focus. I have no idea. Well, we'll take a snapshot of it, and if it becomes yeah. relevant. All right. So, two of three code systems down. Yeah, that's cool. Just gotta figure out the alphabet next. Uh, why don't we finish exploring the city a little bit? That was exactly can, uh, what I was gonna propose, to do. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There's a scaffolding over on the right. Yeah, no, I, was, I thought I saw something. <laughs> hey, look what they're building! A gate! Yep. A warp, just a regular old warp gate. Not convenient, though. But that suggests that these are the people who built the other warp gates. Yeah, it's interesting. Alright, well, we've explored this area a little bit. There's so... a, one more door that I noticed. Oh. I'm doing the thing you told me not to do. Yeah. Let's see. That's probably a lot easier on an Xbox. There's a door. Uh, yeah, there it is. I still can't believe how poorly the game was ported to PC. Ooh, it's an owl. And it's got candles. If I look at it, does it change directions? No. All right. So based on this perspective right here, uh, right here, what I'm seeing, mm -hmm. has anyone built all of Fez or Fez rooms yeah. in Minecraft? I have no I'm idea. I'm serious. It would be I, pretty I know easy you are. to do. I, I don't know. But you're correct. It wouldn't be that hard. Well, I want to go play that now. I'm going to search that as soon as I get done here. Okay. Yeah, you can report back. <laughs> And this is the way a... to the end. This is the. Do we need to? No. I mean, you can if you want to replay the ending again. You can go back through, but. Okay. But the actual place that I'm going is here. Yep. Although, double check on the map to make sure that you've completed everything off of that city. Okay. Let's do that. That was this? Yeah, I think. I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, I think it was. Okay. Nifty. Oh, whatever, I've completed everything off of... Oh, how do you zoom out here? There it is. Completed everything off of everything on this... Uh, From this hub, yeah. Okay, it's time to go back into the game proper and keep exploring then. But we should do that next I time. I think that this is going to be my next target. Oh, wait, no, I didn't get hardly anything off of this. Oh, you missed some stuff? Well, there's oh, you... a secret and a missed room. One missed room and one secret. Huh. Is that what that means? Uh, I can't see. Yeah. It is what that means. This was a different one. And this was that. Alright, well, there is a, there are two secrets that I will be going back to. Okay. This is a good place to call the video for now, I think. Okay. Well, there's one mystery room. Who knows what secrets it holds. We'll get back to it later. All right. Uh, but just where where are we going to go next, though? I'm just curious. Which, That's up to you. Which... you there's, there are still two hubs, two warp gates you haven't even found yet. Yeah, this kind of goes on and on. Man, this map is a little like, dizzying to look at. Yeah. Like I said, we'll play until you've at least explored everything. At that point, if you're done with the game, we can say you're done with the game. You got to at least explore. All right. Cool. Awesome. See you next time. See ya.